We're counting down the 10 most shocking megaprojects Russia is building right now. Each one reshaping the global balance of power in ways few imagined possible. From winter-proof railways and floating nuclear plants to secretive cities in the Arctic, this ranking reveals how $600 billion in new infrastructure is forging a world where old sanctions barely register. Some projects seem almost impossible. Others spark fierce controversy. But every entry was chosen for its scale, innovation, or sheer geopolitical impact. Which Russian project truly rewrites the world order? Let's begin with number 10. In the 10th place, Russia's Vostochny Cosmodrome signals a new era in space independence. Spanning nearly 3,000 square kilometers in the Amur region, this is the largest launch site built in half a century. The $12 billion complex was designed to break Russia's reliance on Kazakhstan's Baikonur Cosmodrome and to enable military as well as civilian launches on Russian soil. But the story is not just about rockets. More than 140 corruption cases have dogged the project, with contractors and officials prosecuted for embezzling hundreds of millions. Despite delays and scandal, Vostochny now anchors Russia's ambition to control its own space destiny, no longer tethered to foreign launch pads. Number 9. Russia's Moscow Petersburg Hyperspeed Rail is redefining what's possible in northern engineering. Designed to reach 400 km per hour, even through brutal winter cold, this line cuts the journey between the two capitals from 8 hours to just 2 hours and 15 minutes. Stretching 679 kilometers, the project commands a budget of nearly $26 billion and mobilizes a workforce of around 42,000. Trains are planned to depart every 10 minutes, turning a frozen corridor into a showcase for Russian rail technology. Beyond domestic travel, this route signals Russia's ambitions to export high-speed infrastructure, even as the country faces economic and political headwinds. In eighth place, the Crimean Bridge stands as a wartime supply line that anchors Russia's grip on the peninsula. Stretching 19 kilometers across the Kerch Strait, it is Europe's longest bridge built during active conflict, carrying nearly 40,000 vehicles each day. Forensic analysis after the 2022 explosion revealed explosives hidden in freight, prompting sweeping security upgrades and constant surveillance. The bridge's role goes far beyond civilian traffic. It keeps military convoys and logistics moving, turning Crimea into an armed fortress. As attacks continue and defenses tighten, this span has become a symbol of how infrastructure can decide the fate of a region. Number 7. The Trans-Siberian Expansion is quietly redrawing the map of Eurasian trade. Russia is pouring nearly $38 billion into doubling 2,000 kilometers of its main rail artery, targeting a freight capacity of 270 million tons per year. This isn't just about new tracks. It's about controlling the overland lifeline between Europe and Asia as maritime routes grow riskier and sanctions bite. The upgrades slash delivery times, boost reliability, and give Moscow a powerful lever over cross-continental commerce. But there's a cost. The project carves through vast Siberian wilderness, raising alarms from environmental groups about habitat loss and ecosystem disruption. For Russia, though, the payoff is leverage, shifting the balance of trade, one steel rail at a time. Number 6. Russia's Arctic megacities are transforming the frozen tundra into permanent hubs for resource extraction. In places like Norilsk and Murmansk, entire cityscapes are engineered to survive temperatures plunging below minus 50 degrees Celsius. Triple-layer pile foundations anchor buildings above shifting permafrost, while ventilated crawl spaces and thermosiphons keep the ground stable year-round. These cities are designed to house over 100,000 people, supporting vast oil, gas, and liquefied natural gas operations across the Arctic. But there's a human cost. Indigenous Nenets herders report losing reindeer pastures and being forced into settlements, their traditions fractured by new urban grids. For the Russian state, these megacities supply a stable workforce and cement control over the Arctic's resource base. For many locals, they mark the end of a nomadic way of life, 
raising questions about whose future is being built in the far north. Number 5. The Yamal LNG Arctic operation stands as proof that Russia can keep gas flowing even when the world tries to shut the door. This ice-bound complex produces 16.5 million tons of liquefied natural gas each year, accounting for a fifth of global LNG supply. The numbers are staggering. 287 shipments have left its frozen docks, each one carried by a fleet of 15 ARC-7 ice-class tankers built to withstand minus 50 degrees Celsius. But here's the twist. Sanctions haven't stopped these exports. Instead, Russia relies on a shadow fleet, ship-to-ship -ship transfers in international waters, and a network of reflagged vessels to reach buyers in Asia. Port call logs show tankers going dark on tracking systems, then reappearing near Murmansk or Norwegian waters to offload cargo. This is not just engineering against the cold, it's logistics built to survive political ice as well. The result is an Arctic supply chain that keeps running, no matter the pressure. Number 4. Russia's SMR nuclear export campaign is quietly reshaping the global balance of power. Rosatom now supplies a third of all new nuclear reactors worldwide with more than 15 countries locked into long-term contracts for Russian fuel, technology, and maintenance. The academic Lomonosov, Russia's floating reactor, delivers a billion kilowatt hours of power each year to Arctic outposts, while deals with Bangladesh and Turkey, totaling over $35 billion, bind client states to decades of Russian oversight. Here's the twist. Unlike oil or gas, these nuclear projects come with dependency built in. Fuel, waste, and even regulatory standards all flow through Moscow. Critics call these floating plants swimming Chernobyls, warning of safety and proliferation risks. But for Rosatom, every new contract is another lever of influence, reaching far beyond energy into the core of national security and policy. Coming to the top three, Russia's Arctic military empire is quietly turning a melting ocean into a fortress and a cash machine. The Northern Sea Route, stretching 5,600 kilometers above the Siberian coast, now bristles with outposts and surveillance, transforming what were once international waters into a militarized Russian zone. Control here isn't just about territory, it's about the world's shipping lanes. 42 icebreakers, including eight nuclear-powered giants, carve paths through the polar ice, giving Russia a fleet unmatched by any other country. The fortified Arctic border now runs for 24,000 kilometers, with radar stations, missile batteries, and new bases anchoring Moscow's claim to both land and sea. By 2035, Government forecasts project $160 billion in revenue from Arctic shipping and resource fees alone. But here's the twist. Every ship that crosses these waters now does so on Russia's terms, with the threat of military intervention never far from the surface. As the ice recedes, the question isn't just who can sail the Arctic, it's who controls the toll booth. Number 2. The Power of Siberia Two Pipeline is quietly rewriting the map of global energy. This 2,700-kilometer artery is engineered to pump 50 billion cubic meters of Russian gas each year, not to Europe, but straight to China. That single figure tells the story. The pipeline's export volume matches the original Nord Stream, erasing decades of European leverage in one stroke. Here's where it gets even more strategic. The financing model based on leaked term sheets, ties repayment directly to future gas deliveries, with Chinese banks fronting much of the $50 billion cost in Yuan. Mongolia, caught in the middle, now faces both economic opportunity and political risk as the pipeline cuts across its territory. For Germany and the European Union, this means the end of an era. No more Russian gas as a bargaining chip. For Beijing, it's energy security on demand. And for Moscow, it's proof that the center of gravity in energy politics has shifted east, locking in a new axis just as the old one collapses. And finally, in first place, the Vostok Oil Arctic Empire 
stands as Russia's ultimate bet on rewriting the global energy map. Deep in the frozen tundra, this project claims over 6.5 billion tons of oil reserves, enough to rival the North Sea and Alaska combined. The ambition is staggering. A $200 billion investment to drill more than 6,500 wells and lay 5,500 kilometers of pipelines, building an oil complex larger than Singapore in one of the world's harshest environments. At the heart of the plan is a 770-kilometer export pipeline, engineered to withstand minus 50 degrees Celsius, channeling up to 100 million tons of crude each year directly toward Asian markets. The goal is clear. Bypass the Suez choke point, sidestep Western sanctions, and anchor a new trade corridor that puts Moscow, not Brussels or Washington, at the center of Eurasian energy flows. But here's where the stakes escalate. Permafrost engineering is untested at this scale, and progress lags far behind the headlines. Most wells remain on paper, and only half the main pipeline is laid. Even so, with year-round Arctic ports nearing completion and a fleet of ice-class tankers on order, Vostok Oil signals a future where Russia's fortunes no longer hinge on Europe. If this gamble succeeds, it won't just shift the flow of oil. It could redraw the boundaries of global power for a generation. From the symbolic reach of the Vostochny Cosmodrome to the epic scale of the Vostok Oil Arctic Empire, this countdown has revealed how Russia's mega-projects are transforming the world's energy, trade, and military balance. Across all 11 entries, a clear pattern emerges. Russia is leveraging extreme engineering, Arctic frontiers, and new eastward alliances to bypass Western sanctions and rewrite the global map. The most shocking projects, like the Power of Siberia, Two Pipeline, and the militarized Northern Sea Route, show how quickly old dependencies can be replaced by new power centers. What qualified each entry was its measurable impact. Record-breaking costs, unprecedented scale, or direct shifts in geopolitical leverage. Together, these projects total over $600 billion and span everything from floating nuclear plants to entire Arctic cities, often at steep environmental and political cost. The real takeaway is this. Russia is building not just infrastructure, but a parallel world order. One where sanctions, geography, and climate are no longer barriers, but challenges to be engineered away.